right. Welcome to what's happening now on KBLKRadio.com. And thank you for tuning in. This is your host, Bishop Bowser. And we have an exciting show for you today. And everyone should be listening. So right now, I want you to text or call seven people and tell them to tune in to this show. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, we're going to have a good one. We have with us Legina Williams. And our topic for this morning is social media, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you want to call in and join, and join in on this conversation, uh, you can call us in at, uh, you can call in at 619-919-4745, all right? So now, you know, maybe you didn't have a pen or you couldn't type it on your notes or whatever on your phone. So we're going to give you this number one more time. So uh, hurry up, grab that pen, you know, get that piece of paper or type it in your phone and get ready to call in. Uh, that number is, are you ready? 619-919-4745. All right? So we, we, we're looking for a good conversation today and want you to call in and join in on this conversation uh, talking about social media, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, I have a quote for you of a black inspiration uh, by uh, Carter G. Woodson. And it, came, it, it, it comes from his book, The Miseducation of the Negro. And I read this book about 25 years ago, and it was a, it's a pretty good book. But um, it reads, and I quote, Practically, all the successful Negroes in this country are of the uneducated type, or of that of Negroes who have had no formal education at all. The large majority of the Negroes who have put on the finishing touches of our best colleges are all but worthless and in the development of their people. If after leaving school they have the opportunity to give out to Negroes what traducers of the race would like to have it learn, such persons may thereby earn a living at teaching or preaching what they have been taught, but they never become a constructive force in the development of the race. The so-called school then becomes a questionable factor in the life of this despised people. As another has well said, to handicap a student by teaching him that his black face is a curse and that his struggle to change his condition is hopeless is the worst sort of lynching. lynching. It kills one's aspirations and dooms him uh, too. And that's in the quote. So today we want to talk about uh, social media. And I, I just have a few things I want to say about that. You know, technology opens our lives up in ways that were, uh, weren't possible even less than a decade ago. You know, and I go back to my day and time. You know, there was a time where uh, uh, you have to stop at a pay phone and use it. Or you have to wait till you get home to call somebody. Internet was unheard of. And so I, I remember those days, you know, pulling over by the roadside to uh, use the pay phone or to call someone uh, on the phone to get some kind of directions because you get lost. Now, you know, uh, uh, somebody listens, especially young folks listen, might say, what? No cell phone, no GPS navigation? No, sir. We didn't have none of that back then. But today you can chat with someone, whether they're in the next room or in another country with ease via a variety of technologies. It's all fast and amazing, brothers and sisters, but on the flip side of the good fortune is that, is that same technology has also provided a way for people to do bad things. And so one of the bad things that happens, you know, when we, when we deal with this is, is um, cyber stalking. And, and let me just give you a definition that I, I, I've got uh, on cyber stalking. And cyber stalking, simply put, is online stalking. It has been defined as the use of technology, particularly the Internet, to harass people, someone. Common characteristics include false accusations, monitoring, threats, identity theft, and data destruction or manipulation. Cyberstalking also includes exploitation of minors, be it sexual or otherwise. The harassment can take on many forms, but the common denominator is that it's unwanted, often obsessive, and usually illegal. Cyberstalking use email, instant messages, phone calls, and other communication devices to stalk. Whether it takes the form of sexual harassment, inappropriate contact, or just plain annoying attention to your life and your family's activities. An important fact about cyberstalking, it is often perpetrated not by strangers, 
but by someone you know. It could be an ex, a former friend, or just someone who wants to bother you and your family in an inappropriate way. And, you know, uh, uh, let me just stop briefly, you know, as I'm giving you these definitions of, of cyber stock and little information, just a little uh, thought here. You know, a lot of times, you know, especially on Facebook and things like that, people will friend you, and, and then sometimes they either come under a false name or don't have no picture, you don't know who this person is, and then they always got some kind of criticism or negative thing they want to say. I'm open to negativity. I'm open for not so much negativity, but constructive criticism if someone has something they want to offer. But don't always offer just constructive criticism. Have something good to say. Let's, let's create a positive environment where we all can uh, at least get along, have some good dialogue and conversation. But you got some people, I don't know, maybe their lives are just miserable. They want to make everybody else miserable. But I'm telling you, if, if you... If you come on my page and I don't know you and you and all you're doing is doing negativity and, and being uh, uh, evil about things, I'm going to unfriend you real quickly because I'm not going to be playing these games with folks. But let me just say this about uh, uh, um, cyber stalking. Cyber stalking can be terribly frightening. It can destroy friendships, credit, careers, self-image and confidence. Ultimately, it can lead the victim into far greater physical danger when combined with real-world stalking. Yes, we're talking serious stuff here. Victims of domestic violence are often cyber-stalking victims. They, like everybody else, need to be aware that technology can make cyber-stalking easy. Spyware software can be used to monitor everything happening on your computer or cell phone, giving tremendous power and information to cyber-stalkers. Now, uh, another piece I want to look at is cyberbullying and give you definition of this. We just talked about cyber stalking. Cyberbullying is the use of cell phones, instant messaging, email, chat rooms, or social network sites such as Facebook and Twitter to harass, threaten, or intimidate someone. Cyberbullying is often done by children who have increasingly uh, uh, early access to these technologies. And, and so we know a lot with children and teens and so on, you have a lot of that cyberbullying going on, but it moves into the uh, adult arena also. So here are some elements that include uh, um, cyberbullying. Uh, Willful. The behavior has to be deliberate, not accidental. It's repeated. Bullying reflects a pattern of behavior, not just one isolated incident. Harm. The target must perceive that harm was inflicted. Computers, cell phone, other electronic devices, um, uh, and all these things, uh, and of course, is what dif differentiates cyberbullying from traditional bullying because it's on the internet, it's on your cell phones, on your computer. So, cyberbullying is when someone repeatedly makes fun of another person online or repeatedly picks on another person through email or text messages or when someone posts something online about another person that they don't like. We also ask about specific behaviors that might constitute cyberbullying, such as hurtful comments, threats, rumors, pictures, or videos posted or circulated online. Depending on the circumstances, these experiences could, could constitute cyberbullying. And you have a lot of that going on. People get mad at you. They, they, they come online and, and, and put your business out before everybody. It used to be a time where, you know, you have an issue. You go to your brother. You go to your sister. You go to somebody themselves and talk to them about it. And then uh, you deal with it from that point of view. But now it's so easy to put people on blast no matter what it is. It can be very dangerous if it's not handled correctly. And so we have to be um, careful of that. So it is important to remember that one instance of mistreatment cannot accurately be equated to bullying, as it must involve harmful behavior of a repetitive nature. Because of the way the Internet has changed, uh, the way we communicate and interact with one another on so many levels, it's become necessary to explore the pros and cons of social media and its effect on our society. And, and here's what um, some def define as some of the pros you know, of it. And, and this first one I'm going to mention, we're going to be talking about this next week in regards to us being under surveillance on social media. Because uh, the ACLU did a report, and we're going to talk about that, Lord willing, next week. But uh, number one, when we look at some of the pros, it increased criminal prosecution because of social media. Uh, uh, one report said that the New York Police Department began using Twitter back in 2011 to track criminals foolish enough 
to brag about their crimes online. And you know people do that, so they're going to be watching and looking at it. When the Vancouver uh, Canucks lost the Stanley Cup in 2011, their Vancouver fans took to the streets and rioted. But local authorities used social media to track and tag the people involved, and they caught people who were stealing during the riot. And, and, all that can, and, and, and so they solve a lot of crimes that way. But sometimes they can manipulate this information and use it for bad. Uh, number two, so uh, here's another pro. Social networking creates social connections, which is true. Statistics show that 70% of adults have used social media sites to connect with relatives in other states. And 57% of teens have reported making new friendships on social media sites. Here's another pro. Number three, students are doing better in school. This is interesting to statistic about the pros and cons of social media. Uh, and its effect on students doing well in school. Students with internet access at a rate of 50% have rep reported using social networking sites to discuss schoolwork and another 59% talk about instructive topics. Mm -hmm. And so let's move to, I can talk, go on and go on and talk, but let me just get some before we go on a break. Let me look at some of the cons. Social media and the news. Here's a con. Much of the news information that people read about uh, comes from social media websites. And that figure uh, estimated is around 27.8%. This figure ranks just under newspapers, print newspapers, it, it, which is at 28.8%. Greater, greater than radio's figures of 18.8% and far outpaces the figure of other print publications at just 6%. And, so, and sometimes you get misinformation through that. And, and you have to wonder, is this true or is this not? And when you look at the blogs and different things like that. Number two is too much misinformation, right? With the uh, event of the web, people start to create their own websites and blogs. While many of those blogs were just basic diaries, a few of them were about topics like health and politics, while others were how-to blogs. Many blogs have turned into rumor mills, spreading mis misinformation that people tend to believe just because it's on the, on the web. Rumors about Hurricane Sandy and gunfights in other countries like Mexico have been picked up by reliable news sources, and this misinformation has been shared without the proper vetting of the sources providing the information. And I'm um, skip on down, and let me just go to uh, one more before we go into our break. Uh, social media is the cause of less face-to-face -face communication. You hear that? One last discussion about the pros and cons. The social media is a lack. Is a lack of one-on-one -on -one communication. In a 2012 study, families who reported spending less time with one another rose from a level of 8% in 2000 to 32% in 2011. The study also reported that 32% of the people in the survey, survey either were texting or were on social media sites instead of communicating with each other during family gatherings. Now, that is sad. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a break here, and we're going to come back, and when we come back, we're going to jump right into discussion with uh, Miss Legina Williams, and uh, she's with us, and we're going to have a good discussion here, so stay tuned. And remember, you can call in at 619-919-4745. We'll be right back after these brief commercials. Sunshine, Blue Skies, and KBLK. All right, welcome back to What's Happening Now on KBLKradio.com, and thank you for staying with us. And uh, we want to get into this discussion about social media, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And, uh, you know, if you want to call in, let me give you this number again. If you want to call in and join this conversation, feel, feel free to call in right now, 619-919-4745. Now, I want to welcome into the discussion uh, here, uh, we have Miss Legina Williams. Uh, thank you for being on What's Happening Now, and welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. Now, uh, Ms. Williams, tell us a little bit about yourself so we can know who we have here. Um, well, I'm from San Diego. Um, I'm a mom. Um, I have, I'm an um, early childhood educator, and I work in the social services field. Um, I actually just recently got back to San Diego. I had uh, lived in Georgia for some time. How long did you live in Georgia? Uh, I lived in Georgia for about uh, 16 years. Okay. Yeah, um, but yeah, I'm back now, and um, yeah, I'm just here. How many children you have? I have three. Three? How old are they? Um, one is actually 21. All right. The other is uh, 11 and 13. All right, all right, all right. Very good. So, um, 
What has been your experience on the internet and, you know, and specifically talking about social media and things like that? Uh, well, in the beginning, it was it was fun. I mm-hmm. mean, uh, I like I said, I lived in Georgia, and most mm-hmm. of my family is here in California. So, mm-hmm. I would um, I use that to kind of connect with them. Right. And at that time, my daughter was a teenager, so I also kind of you know would follow right. her. And so <laughs> I just you know I I did that, and she I was just... said you were stalking her, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she did. Uh-huh. she kind of did. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I just used it for that purpose, and mm-hmm. um, you know, it was it was fun. All right, all right. So, so how did you? I mean, so when you're using it for that purpose, evidently. So, do you have any social media sites now that you're a part members of? Just the Facebook. Well, actually, I just did a Tumblr, but I'm not on there a lot. Okay, I now I heard of a, 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 a Tumblr. But I'm not on there. What is that all about, Tumblr? Well, I'm actually new to it myself. Mm-hmm. Um, you can kind of go on there and, and try to, like, create a blog. And I did it actually to kind of get off Facebook a little bit. And mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the things I had experienced. So mm-hmm. I kind of went on Tumblr and wrote a, a few things. Oh, okay. Um, so so now <clears throat> when we look at we talk about, you know, um, cyber stalking and uh, cyber bullying. And we'll get more into this a little bit later on. But... You know, have you ever been cyber stalked? I wouldn't say cyber stalked, no. Uh, more of bullying, yes. Cyber bullying? Yes. So you have been cyber bullied. Uh, you faced some of the cyber bullying. I have, yes. And uh, can you give us some examples of some of the things that, that, that have happened you've gone through? Uh, okay. Um, I have a um, an ex-boyfriend that mm-hmm. um, I dated uh, years ago and... You know, kind of off and on. Um, I guess um, there was a situation where he got involved with someone, and we were all Facebook friends. And um, he kind of brought me into his situation, and I was unaware at that time of his situation. Mm-hmm. And uh, she got upset. And how long ago was this? Oh, this might have been uh, maybe six months ago, oh, so I this think. Is fresh. Okay. Yeah, this isn't. It wasn't that long ago. Okay. And, um, so yeah, he brought me into that situation and she got really upset and I'm, you know, and and all this on social media, all this on Facebook. Yes. Um, and what she started to do was she just started causing a lot of chaos. She Mm -hmm. just would throw out a lot of subliminals and, Mm -hmm. um, just was on the attack. And, um, we have a lot of mutual friends because we all went to high school together. So pretty much everyone was aware of what she was doing to me. Did you you know her from high school? Oh yeah. She was like my uh, best friend in high school. Wow. And how'd she get dragged into all of this? Uh, dating him, I guess. Some getting connected with him some kind of way. Oh yeah. As an adult. Yes. Okay. 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 Go ahead. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) And, um, so, uh, yeah, so it was a horrible experience, uh, mm-hmm. very embarrassing because I'm, I'm a pretty private person, kind of right. to myself. Right. Um, even with my social media, like I said, I really interacted a lot with my family. And, mm-hmm. I mean, I did some friends, but, you know, I would, and, and the things that she would put out were things that he apparently probably told her mm-hmm. about me. And um, it was just, it was a horrible experience. Right. And, and when you say it's a horrible experience, how did that impact you as far as whether emotional, mentally? Um, uh, I mean, did it, did, uh, were you able to, I mean, did you, um, delete her and, and, uh, was it something that affected you the way you worked and, and went about your daily life or what kind of impact did it have on you? Um, mentally it was just like exhausting. Mm-hmm. It was just, um, uh, it's just something I had never experienced before. So mm-hmm. I'm just like, I didn't even know people did. I mean, I have heard of it, but you know. Right. I had no idea, you know, the the impact and everything. And, um, yeah, it was just exhausting, and um, it it made me extremely sad. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. So it did have an impact on my my everyday life for a little while. Now, now, I might have missed it, but how long have you been back in San Diego? I've only been back since. I got back the end of uh, early June. Actually, so only. this happened while you was in Georgia. This wasn't yes, I was in. And Georgia. that's the amazing thing about you know internet in general and, and social media and all of that is because you could be in Georgia, you know, like before social media and all that. If I had some issues in Georgia, mm-hmm. I can leave that city 
and come here and, you know, start fresh and, you know, and don't have to worry about anything. But now it follows you right. from the perspective because it's Internet and everybody see it every day, all the time. It doesn't matter where you live. You can live mm -hmm. in Georgia, you can live in San Diego, uh, California, whatever. You can go to Africa mm -hmm. or Europe or anywhere. And that stuff follow you because it's on social media. Right. And I don't think people really realize the harm and the danger and the effect that it has on people when they, uh, you know, either start stalking or bullying people and saying harmful and evil things to people and posting mm -hmm. things out there. And, you know, a lot of times that stuff is out there no matter what, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, you can delete a picture, but if somebody's already saved a picture or whatever, then it's out there. And, mm -hmm. and you can't control that once somebody else get that kind of information. And it's the same way once people start posting things about you, people can get a screenshot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And that stuff can just circulate and circulate and a lie. You know, All right. one thing they say is, you know, a lie, uh, a lie can get up and put his clothes on, travel around the world before truth get up and put his clothes on. And, and it's amazing how these things travel. And it's so harmful and and hateful uh did you ever resolve that issue yeah i deleted her <laughs> i deleted her as a friend uh he deleted eventually he just deleted himself when everything kind of blew up and uh <laughs> but it's amazing because yeah. when people do these things on the internet what i've found is that they tend to lie and say oh no that didn't happen no mm. that didn't happen you know and because it's on the internet sometimes it's like okay you know, the proof may not exactly be there anymore, except for... except if they delete it. Right. If they delete it, it's gone, you know? So people actually are in denial. I mean, will lie and say, no, I didn't say that or I didn't post that. Mm, right. And, and, and so on when they actually did. Yes. But they wouldn't delete it. Instead of saying, oh, you know, I'm sorry, I deleted that. Mm. And, you know, uh, that was wrong. Oh, they you know, didn't. I shouldn't have done that. Or even, you know, my thing is, is that... If you did something wrong, we're, we're human, we're subject to human error, we make mistakes, we're supposed to be loving and forgiving folks, mm -hmm. and part of receiving forgiveness is repentance, and if a person like, recognizes, because, you know, you could do some experiment being angry, and then you think about it later, like, you know, that was wrong, I shouldn't have done that, because one of the things we always told, and, you, and all of y'all just, you know, let your emotion control you, and you want to get out there and post something, you know, I was always told, and, and this, you know, in, in not even dealing with it, but in general, if you're going to write a letter or make a phone call or anything when you're angry, mm -hmm. you know, you can write that letter, but let it sit for a minute. All right. Calm down, you know, mm -hmm. a day or two, a week or whatever it, uh, uh, it takes, and then go back and read it. Mm -hmm. Then go back and think about what you were going to do and, and pray on it. And you might realize that, you know what, that, that's not the right thing to say. That's yeah. not the right thing to do. And one of the things that I'm really starting to see now, and is, it, it has a good effect and it has bad effect in social media, is live streaming. Because mm -hmm. you can catch a person in certain emotions at that moment mm -hmm. and um, it's live. Right. <laughs> you can't take that back. Right. And so now when you go out, it's almost like you got to be on your best behavior because you'll never know when somebody is. Um, I mean, we should be on our best behavior anytime, but sometimes you want to just let your hair down because you think it's a private conversation between two people or a few people. So you might be able to say things to that group that you wouldn't want to say publicly. Right. But then sometimes, you, you know, somebody might have a camera up and doing some live, I mean, have a phone up and doing some live streaming on you or whatever, recording it. And it's just crazy, you know, today, and, and all this stuff get posted on social media, and then you're in a mess, you know, right. because you said something, did something, like, and people are calling, like, well, you weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I see now how you think about me. And so, so we think about all that, the live streaming and, and all, and, and, and then being able to capture, capture us in our most vulnerable moments. Um, I don't, of course, I mean, I don't do any of that, but, um, I don't think it's good because a lot of that stuff is used to embarrass people, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, again, it's just, it's, it's so, it's strange to me that mm -hmm. people could even use social media just to constantly like harass people or to, um, just make people feel bad, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and I can't understand like with my experience, like, mm -hmm. why not just pick up a phone and call a person? Right. Or even a message a mm -hmm. person. Mm -hmm. Why is it this need for people to use this, uh, the the internet to just, you know, 
make hurt people. yeah to hurt people yeah. and it really does hurt people and yeah. i have i have stated several times on my facebook page mm-hmm. um you know that it's not because you know i've had friends say oh well it's just facebook it's just facebook it's no big deal well it is a big deal it's yes. a big deal if you're on there intentionally trying to bother people right right and 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 you would be surprised at how many people have that attitude like oh right. it's no big deal it's just you know yeah, that's that's so. kind of crazy. But and that's the thing, though. You know, even before social media and all this, you know, when we, you know, you be in your little circles at school or, mm-hmm. you know, um, at home or in the community and so on, and people you socialize with and so on, people say or do harmful things, hateful things, or whatever. They kind of have the same ads. Oh, you know, it's just us, you know. Yeah. But don't realize, you know, I think on social media it's, it's even more harmful. It's just as harmful and can be even more harmful because you bring more people into it. Right. Because if you, if I'm just in my home or hanging out. In front of my house or at the park or whatever mm-hmm. and some things happen it's just between us right but nowadays you know i mean folks are taking pictures everywhere people are doing video everywhere and they just they're they're posting and stuff because you're in public mm-hmm. you you don't have a right to privacy yes. they say so people can can record stuff and and take pictures of things and and there you are you could be in a vulnerable position you could be acting or saying certain things and and maybe at that moment, you know, you, that's how you felt. You were angry, but then we thought about later that was wrong. But now it's around the world, and people see it, having a picture of you is what they call in psychology the halo effect. You know, that mm-hmm. first it, that 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 first impression of you is a lasting one. So if they see you in a negative light the first time, that's the way they're gonna look view you mm-hmm. overall in your life. You're like. You just caught me in a, in a vulnerable moment. That's not how I am. Mm-hmm. I'm a I'm a nice, good person, or whatever you know, person right. described or describe themselves. And I just think you know, there's a lot of good in social media. You know, like making connections, keeping up with your family. You know, doing a lot of positive and good things. But then it can just become so negative. Also, let me ask you a question: How long have you been on social media? Uh, let's see. Um, I got on there. About five years, uh, about six years. Six years? Yes. And, and uh, has the experience in those five years, six years been all good? I mean, I don't know that I, mean, I shouldn't say all good. What percentage of, of that, that, that five, six years has been good experience versus negative, bad experiences? There probably has been more good experience. Mm-hmm. The problem is the bad experiences mm-hmm. just... Sometimes in our way. Yeah, because they're so... Um, I actually did not get on my Facebook a lot. I was more of the kind of person I got on like once in a while. And then, mm-hmm. you know, maybe I would have like during spring break time where I'm off for a week or something. Right. I would get on and, you know, a little <laughs> bit more often. Right. Um, and um, so, yeah, for me, I would say that I guess it was, I had a lot of good experiences. But then mm-hmm. when I started having, like, I recently had another bad experience. Oh, just recently? Yes, just what recently. Happened? Again, an ex-boyfriend, same ex-boyfriend, um, decided to um, embarrass me on mm-hmm. Facebook and, and involved some other people. And I actually felt like they were, like, guys trying mm-hmm. to bully me. Now, 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 I don't know if you want to tell, how old are these guys? Uh, 40 and uh, maybe like 42. Everyone's like 40. All right. Now, this, you know, uh, um, uh, I'm not talking to these guys because I don't know them. Mm-hmm. I'm just speaking in general that, you know, when you mean, get a certain age, you're supposed to mature and grow up exactly. and, you know, don't do what teenagers and kids do. You know, got to be more mature than that mm-hmm. uh, in the sense of the way we talk and treat and do things on social media. You know, uh, today it just seems like. And I get on my kids about this all the time. They get upset real quick, and then they'll post something on uh, uh, social media how they feel, you know, and and put their business all out there. Hey, that's not the place for that. Right. You know, I mean, you do want to make connections with people, things like this, but I don't need that. Some things you don't need to put out there, but people tend to think they're supposed to put all their business out there for some reason. I don't know what what they're trying to do, looking for attention, uh, uh, or or what they're looking for in in, in doing this, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's your purpose? Do, you, you know, do, don't you have a meaningful purpose in life where you know it shouldn't be social media? <laughs> you know, that's where you can. That's be one tiny aspect of your life where you make connections with people and you can do some networking and things like that. I mean, that's kind of where and uh, education and so on. But mm-hmm. that shouldn't be your whole life. And that's one of the things that I did wanted to get to a couple of things. Is so so you you so uh, right now? Why are you still on social media? Is it I, I know before it was your kids and that's mm-hmm. how it started, but why are you on there now? 
Um, still kind of the family mm-hmm. thing. Um, and my daughter, my daughter goes to Georgia State oh, okay. in Georgia, so okay. I still she doesn't get on that often, but mm-hmm. still I'll talk to her sometimes. And then my family is kind of spread it out over San Diego, so okay. um, you know, a, a way of um, communicating with them. And then when something happens in our family, I have relatives who will get on social media and right. they will put it on there, okay. and so we kind of spread things around. So okay, that's good. Yeah. Yes, and see, those are some good things mm-hmm. about social. Media. You know, I got family in 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 South Carolina, in Virginia, and and I think still in Georgia, mm-hmm. different places like that. You know, some of them you can connect with and be able to communicate with. Where years and years and years ago, you couldn't do that. You know, mm-hmm. so oh, yeah, I think I got some family somewhere in Virginia. <laughs> you know, what I mean? right. but now you can look them up and say, hey, you know, I'm your cousin or nephew or whatever, yeah. and and be able to you know um, at least kind of communicate. And, and make a connection there with yes. each other and so on. And and so that's that that's good to be able to do. But I think, um, you know, sometimes, you know, uh, it, like a friend told me years ago, is that you have both angels and demons on, on the internet, you know. Yes. And you got to be careful of the demons that are out there yes. uh, because nothing but evil come from them. Uh, let me ask you another question. Uh, what is your thoughts, and I don't know if it ever happened to you, but a lot of people are addicted to this stuff when you're talking about social media and just spend all their consuming time on there. I mean, they live on there. I mean, you're going to meetings, people checking their timelines, and you know, and sometimes I have to rebuke myself. I've got to be honest. Mm-hmm. I got to rebuke myself sometimes because you know you'll post something and you and they'll let you know when somebody commented or whatever. So you got to go in there and check and so on. But then I tell them, man, they put this stuff down, and mm-hmm. you don't need to be doing. It. You know, don't get you don't get so caught up in in all of all that. Right. But it's very easy to become addicted, very easily to get caught up, and you can lose yourself in it. What about Definitely. yourself? Yeah, I have seen that. I have. Um, I guess I've experienced that too. I'm guilty of that, mm-hmm. especially when I started to have like problems on social media. Kind of, mm-hmm. um, you know, I might like take a couple of breaks, but then I get back on, and mm-hmm. I just see more of the, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was kind of getting like drawn into it too. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I see that happen to a lot of people, and mm-hmm. I can tell, like, you can see who the people are that are on there constantly mm-hmm. because they kind of know how to manipulate it a little mm-hmm. bit more than others. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is very addicting, and I don't. It's not healthy, right, actually. Right, right, right. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I know that, um, uh, you know, because you know, sometimes people can get so caught up because they got to read every uh, post, look at every picture. But the thing that I found is that I, I don't think I, I think what's popular are pictures. Well, if you post a picture on there, you know, that's, you know, you get it. And people base, you know, whether it was a good picture or not, if you get a lot of likes or not. So, yeah. you know, they look at the likes, the comments and so on, and the shares. And, and you know, so pictures are real, the real thing. Because people, if they get on Facebook, they can look at a picture and say, oh, look at the next picture. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe, you know, a five sentence or, not. I shouldn't say five, you know, maybe the one, one to a four sentence statement or something like that. You know, but when it comes to, like, articles or a video or something like that, that might, you know, that take a little bit more time of people. But you got mm-hmm. some people that will read everything and go through everything, but you got other people that just breeze through things. But they spend so much time because if you got 5,000 friends, you know, and, and they all posting stuff, right. that's a lot to follow. That's a lot to, to look at and go through and so mm-hmm. and, and And everybody's posting something on there. And, I, and one of the things that I think, and you, uh, like your comment on this is that I think I don't know if sometimes people post stupid and crazy things and ignorant things and and sometimes things are nice and beautiful but are they trying to do to get attention from the perspective of oh my video I, you know hip my video went viral my picture went viral and then you look at so well no if you look at definite viral that didn't go viral you might have had a few thousand or mm-hmm. even a couple hundred thousand but they got going to millions at least five million right. uh, to really be considered viral mm-hmm. and so on. What are your thoughts on that? If, are, do people do these things to get attention and that addiction that they have uh, uh, on it? Um, what is it? What is it that 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 um, attracts and draws people into it to where that they lose themselves? I think a lot of it is attention. Mm-hmm. Like I think they get some kind of boost off of it, off of all the likes on the picture mm-hmm. that they get, and and I think. Um, you know, I don't know. I sometimes think of Facebook as like it, it's an, an its own world or something. You know, and, it is, it yeah, is. and and it people <laughs> get so drawn into it. You mm-hmm. know, they just kind of like forget about 
what's going on over here with them. You know, it's like it's like a habit or something. And then it just depends. Like I said, I think there are people on there who just get a kick out of all the drama that goes mm-hmm. on. And then there are people who just need that extra boost and they like all the likes. So they post all these pictures and videos of themselves. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. I don't know what their reality is like. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> but it, it takes them away from their reality. Right. And right. maybe it's an escape for some people. Right. I'm not. Yeah, ab- yeah, yeah, absolutely. And 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 we know. I know there's you know, and, and we can let's like, move on. Get into some of the we talk about some of the good and and, and so on. But I I really you know this addiction mm-hmm. that people have uh, to it. You know, to being on social media and so on and. And just posting and posting and posting and posting and posting. And I know in their own little world, they might see that, you know, I'm just, you know, uh, trying to share, you know. All right. But if if everybody have a few hundred friends and so even into the thousands, it becomes very difficult to keep up with all that kind of stuff. You know, yes. with, all the, with all the various um, uh, postings that, that are up there and mm-hmm. so on. And I think sometimes when people post something... Like a picture, let's stick with that. They may think feel that their picture is the only picture they're posting or whatever, or not too many. But there's so much stuff on there that that uh, people are posting up there is that it's almost like you know, man, you know, do something different. So I try to post to educate. You know, mm-hmm. I want to educate about something. But uh, the, then you look and you're like, okay. I don't think even people take time to read this because there's a lot of stuff you got to read. You know, right. There's a link to take you somewhere to educate you. And, you know, people are not, I know people don't have time for that. Mm. You know, that's why pictures and a few, you know, a statement or something might do versus others. So, so I, I don't know. And this is what I want to ask you. When we talk about social media and networking and making those connections and, 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 and sharing things with your friends and so on, um, what should we be sharing? What should we, uh, when we when we network, what kind of network should we be doing? You know, because sometimes I, I get sick and tired of all these tags. Mm. Oh, and you yes. only got to tag me one time. <laughs> you know, then everybody else is tagging you on the same thing. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I don't want to uh, unfriend this person. But at the same time, you just, I'm getting too many tags on this. Right. You know, you ten tags on the same flyer. I don't need it. And you only got to send it one time. You don't have to send it to remind me again because I got it. <laughs> and if it's something that I want to go to or be a part of, I'm gonna put it in my calendar. And I, I sometimes what I'll do is I'll even save the flyer and, sh- and share it. Not so much share it on social media. I'll share it and put it in my email and send it on my phone and say, "Hey, check this out." And so on. So if it's something I want to do and want to be a part of, then I'm gonna do it. And best way, if you want me to be a part of something, pick up the phone and call me, mm-hmm. or or you see me, you know, try to connect with me, sit down, talk to me about it. You know, because if I see it on social media, I'm probably not going to come to it just because you posted it up there. I know people want to do that social media thing and post all these flyers and different things and tag everybody a hundred thousand times right. and so on but that's not effective at least not with me what is your thought i think we should post like what we what we really enjoy but i guess also that's like con- consider other people you know um i see i have some younger you know i have nieces and, and nephews mm-hmm. on social media and mm-hmm. um Sometimes I look at some of the things that they post, and I kind of like, I'll, I guess I say I give them a pass because mm-hmm. they're young, but mm-hmm. still, you know, um, some of it's a little inappropriate, you know. So I guess um, we, we want to post things that we like, but we yeah. need to be somewhat considerate of others. We yeah. just can't, you know, there's an audience out mm-hmm. there, and I think a lot of people f- forget that. And younger people, okay, I can, like I said, give them a pass, but the older ones that do it, ah, uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and then it can become a competition thing, too, you know, and I have to, like, catch myself because I'll, I'll get on the, not so much the downside of it, but, like, okay, you know, because you see some folks, they, they'll they post something, picture, whatever, get hundreds of likes, you mm-hmm. post them, get five likes. If you're basing it on that, on the likes, people, yeah. like, uh, either looking at it or liked it or whatever, and so, oh, you don't like me? <laughs> You don't care about what I post or, what, or I'm not that popular mm-hmm. and so on. So it becomes, you know, uh, uh, but that doesn't make who you are, you know. And so with me, when I post something, I, you know, and I hope people don't take this the wrong way, but it doesn't matter to me whether you like it or not. I'm, I'm not really trying to get a lot of likes per se mm-hmm. or a lot of shares or comments on it. It's just something that I thought was nice to share. Right. You know what I'm saying, and and oh, this is something nice and shit. If you want to look at, you know, if, if only one person like it and three people viewed it, 
fine. You know, okay, you weren't interested in that, but it ain't gonna stop you from posting things like that because exactly. I think it's important. I can say at least the information is there for you and it's up for you to read it. And so, but I think a lot of times people really like go into a strategy meeting, either with themselves or whatever in their mind of what the post in order to for that to become popular and maybe even go viral and so on versus just sharing you know like uh, there's something that I share and I'll tag my family right you know, hey check this out and so on and, and for them to all to see it and so on and 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 you know so that's fine those things like that or you might have some friends you want to share something with and that's fine and Danny but some of the stuff that people post I just think is outrageous and so on so uh, I want to um Move. Let me move on here. Yeah. So, do you think people get on social media to have a purpose in life? Uh, they're lonely or uh, have nothing else to do or, you know, at least this way they connect with people where they don't know how to connect with people in real life. You know, because like yesterday, you know, at, at church, you know, talked about, you know, uh, building relationships. Because I, I don't think people know how to build relationships with, with other people. You know, they just... Um, they do the social media thing, and and they they say, "Hey, friend me." A person friend you think you got a friend? <laughs> you know that's not your friend. No. So you know, in real life, you got to have one on one with people, right. face to face with people, to exactly. build relationships. It's exactly. not going to happen on social media. Exactly. So, so what do you think about that? About people getting on social media to have purpose in life? I think that probably is true for some people. Um, you know. Um, I'm sure there are people out there that are are lonely and don't have a lot going on in their life or, you know, need some kind of extra um, attention in their life. Um, You know, I I think for for some, I mean, for other people, maybe not, you know, maybe it's more just a, well, it's all kind of an escape there, even for them, it's an escape from their reality, but, and, you know, and then it's, it's, it benefits people, I mean, it's for people who just want to get on and just, you know, um, connect, but, um, yeah, I definitely think that can apply to some people. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So, um, have you ever been contacted by strangers on, on the internet and so on, and if so, how did you respond? I usually ignore it. If ignore. I get a message from someone and they can't, I even say who they are, really. I mean, like, there's no picture. Um, and they'll say, you know, something like, oh, I remember you from high school, something, something. Okay, I don't <laughs> respond. Yeah, and I had something that happened to me about, um, I don't know, probably a couple of weeks ago now, a few weeks ago, whenever it was, is that, because like I told my wife, I said, I don't, you know, I, I'm on there, and my thing is I just want to share and, and connect with people and be able to network and mm-hmm. things like that. And so I don't care who it is. Somebody want to be a friend, I'll friend. I don't know. I care if I know you or not. You know, uh, you can be CIA. I don't care. You know, I, I'm not doing anything illegal. But sometimes when you friend some people, then they post stuff on your timeline or whatever, your Facebook. And uh, one time somebody did some pornographic stuff. Mm-hmm. And and on there, my wife and my niece caught it. Then my wife caught it. I'm like, what? And so they showed me how to go in there and untag or whatever it is and, and meet, unfriend right. uh, uh, those kind of people. I think that's an extreme example of some of the things that happen on there. But those things do happen because you have, I don't know what to call them, people that spamming and people doing a whole lot of other different kind of things that are trying to um, uh, sell stuff and all kinds. So you, you get, I, I know you get a lot of that kind of stuff out there and so on. But, you know. To me, I'm very suspicious of strangers. I'm very suspicious of people yes. who would just, you know, who would contact you and want to kind of try to have a conversation with you, and you don't know them or they don't know you. Right. And 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 like, you know, uh, I just don't trust that. I, I, you know, I have to know you. So that's why I think face to face is is very important. You know, you're not going to get to know me that way because I'm not going to have too much of a conversation with you. Like, right. Yes. Uh, so um, one of the things that I, I do know is that like teasing. Mm-hmm. Lying, gossiping, threatening people, spreading rumors, harassing, uh, all forms of bullying. I know that's one of the things that um, uh, you said, some things you face. Right. Yeah, if these things occur online, uh, and are they perceived as less harmful because they're online? Or, and, and has anyone ever done things to you like that? As, you know, and I know you, you talk about some of the stuff that, that has happened, but do you think it's less harmful because people are doing it online? No, 
it's not. It's actually, to me, probably more harmful. And okay. the reason I say that is because if someone is in your face, at least you guys can talk about it. Right. You know, you're face-to-face. -face. Right. That Internet, it's like, mm -hmm. what can you do? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a person just can... can Especially if it's someone who's on Facebook all the time or on that whatever it is all the time, mm -hmm. like they may be able to, you know, they just know how to do things a little bit better than right, you, and right. so they're doing all this attacking you, and it's like you're like, what, you know? Mm -hmm. And I've I've actually tried to message mm -hmm. people that have attacked me, mm -hmm. and they will not respond. Wow. But will continue to do bad things to me. Right. And you know, the, here's the thing that I find is that, you know, I, I see some people that make some comments on your, your something you post or whatever. And you're like, where is this person coming from? You know, man. But then when you meet them and talk to them face to face, they seem like nice people. And, and they seem like, you know, they're okay. But it's like, okay, then why you post? And talk like that on, on the internet, you know. She like a decent human being right here. Right. But when you post something, you know, it's it, it's almost kind of like saying in my face, <laughs> you right. know. Because a person's one one way when they're not in your face, you know, they can talk about you. And I think it, it's kind of like that on the internet. They can hide. Exactly. They can hide. Exactly. And, 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 and um, uh, but when you catch them face to face, it's a whole different, different kind of story, story, right? So, so yes. I don't, I just don't want to get caught up in that, you know. As far as being in battles, I've done it a couple times. God forgive me, I had to get out of that kind of stuff. Um, now, let me ask you a question, and this is for everybody that's out there that's listening. Um, got a few minutes left here. If you were asked to disconnect your cell phone and no internet for, let's say, a period of two weeks. How easy or hard would it be for you, and why? I could do it. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Okay. Um, I actually do things like that. I'll stay off the Internet. I can stay off for a week. Okay. I will cut my phone off mm -hmm. for like a day or two. Mm -hmm. I mean, and I've had people... I've had my girlfriend say, Legina, don't do that. Like, how can you do that? No one can reach you, you know? And I'm like, because I need peace of mind. Right. I just believe in having peace of mind. I don't like anyone messing up my peace of mind. So, mm -hmm. yes, it's not hard for me, but for some people it, it might be hard. Yeah, yeah. you know, in, in, in the uh, the cell phone age, you know, we, we, uh, I'm a full-time pastor right now. Mm -hmm. But before I was a full-time pastor, you know, I worked for years and I was pastor at the same time, you know, uh, and, um, you know, I had, you know, back in the pager days, I had pagers, you know, then back when we started having cell phones, I had cell phones. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I went full time, I, I cut back on my budget. And so one of the things that went was my cell phone. That's how I used my house phone. Mm -hmm. And for years and years and years and years, I didn't have no, no, no cell phone. Mm -hmm. And a lot of everybody around me had cell phones, but I didn't have one. Mm -hmm. And I got so used to it, I didn't need it. I like if you need to get in contact, just call my house, leave a message. I get it. And right. people, you got to get a cell phone. Cause I'll try to reach you. Blah blah blah. But you know, I, I think that um, I can go back to that if I need to do need right. to do that. Uh, there's some things that I use today that, depending on what's going on, um, I can disconnect to. You know, because like when you said you 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 turn off your phone, the internet, and everything. The first thing come to mind, how do you check your emails? <laughs> you know, because. You get a lot. You can get a lot of important stuff mm -hmm. on your emails, and then with your phone, you have your calendar in there. You have your reminders in there, mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of things. So we kind of like with with these with technology today, we kind of like just tie our life into it right. so to the point like it. yeah, till we can't disconnect. But I think it's very important, as you just mentioned, for us to try to do that sometimes. Right. Like, hey, don't check your emails. Just. Mm -hmm. Go off, go offline, you know, mm -hmm. and even put like when people go on vacation, they put that auto reply on the email. Hey, you know, I won't be checking my emails until five, five days, two weeks from now. Yeah. You know, sorry, okay, you know, yeah. <laughs> when, well, life is going to go. If I die today, life is still going to go on. Right. right. So hey, you don't need me that bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and sometimes, you know, we think that life will stop. You know, mm -hmm. if you're not in the mix of things, but life, this world will keep moving exactly. and things will keep happening whether you're in it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, sometimes this stuff can stress you out and kill you mm -hmm. if you're not careful in, in uh, what you're doing. But so try to disconnect from all this stuff and cut back. On going on all the stuff all the time, right. you know, find exactly. some other things to do and so on. Um, mm -hmm. uh, give me one th good thing about social media or have you already done it? Because I know we run out of time, so I, I don't want to close on a negative note. But um, uh, give me one good thing about social media. Or if you can give me two if you have some. Um, if if used appropriately and, and in a good way, it's it's 
it's a good way to stay connected to people. Mm-hmm. I mean, a good way to stay connected to your family and mm-hmm. to and to friends, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, and, and even advertisement and getting things um, out to, to the public and things like that, so. Right. Yeah, that's good. So, so what, what would you like to see change on social media? I wish it could be monitored better some kind of way. I mean, I wish people would stop using it to um, hurt other people. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not... If you want to communicate with someone and you have something to say, I mean, especially if it's something bad, if, you know, you're upset, pick up a phone, Mm -hmm. uh, message a person, stop using the social media to Mm -hmm. try to embarrass people Mm -hmm. and try to hurt people. Mm -hmm. It is silly. It's very unnecessary. Um... And, I mean, just learn to be mature. That's just not how you do things. Right, right. And um, if, if you, in my opinion, if you can't pick up a phone and call someone and say, you just don't need to say it. Then. Exactly. Just just yeah. leave it alone. Yeah. You know, and I, I like that what you said. I, I know we um, uh, got about a minute left. Uh, but one of the things that I like what you just said is that, and I think that's the, the horrible part about the social media is embarrassing people, you know, and shaming people. Exactly. And so on. And threats are, are serious, too. And I hate you know, because you can threaten somebody life and that can mess somebody up, you know. But uh, we, you know, don't do that. You know, right. stop doing that. Exactly. You know? and, and you can hide behind that phone or computer or whatever it is you're, you're using in technology to communicate, but you can be damaging somebody. You know, people have gone and committed suicide because of things that were said or about them and how they exactly. were teased or bullied exactly. and laughed at. You know, people have gone, uh, been, uh, are depressed mm-hmm. and all messed up because of, of, of some of the things that have been done. Let right. us show a little bit more love. Exactly. Let us show a little bit more compassion. Let us, you know, and I see people doing it all the time and y'all that's doing it, keep doing it. Posting positive stuff, things mm-hmm. to encourage people, giving people a good exactly. word, and so on. Because you know we got enough negativ- negativity in this world, we do. in the sense of putting people down and attacking people and hurting people and things like that. Let's make it more positive if we're going to do it. And, and you know, in our little circles, in our little world, in our little arena on social media, we can begin that 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 uh, trend of doing some positive and good things, you know. Yeah, sometimes you got to call some things out and address some things and deal mm-hmm. with some things, but I think there's a time and place for everything. Mm-hmm. And we got to get back to the place of where we're trying to build a positive and good, constructive community where, you know, I feel that it's safe I can go online, you know. Exactly. Uh, you know, when I see somebody made a comment on, on uh, Facebook, oh, okay, let me go see what this is. I hope it ain't mm-hmm. something that's going to get me upset and, you know, right. the whole shebang, you know, and, and, and sometimes just ignore stuff because mm-hmm. I don't even want to go there with you, okay. Exactly. You see what you say, go on, I'm, I'm gone on because I, it, it's really not about that. Uh, we can educate people. We can make points and debate a little bit about issues. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But that personal attack stuff, exactly. you know, we just we need to let that go. We need to let that go. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, you know, uh, we thank you for uh, tuning in today on What's Happening Now on KBLK Radio. Tune back in next Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m. We're going to be talking about the social media still, but talking about the surveillance that's going on. We're going to get into a good discussion about that. All right. God bless you. And we look forward to you tuning in next Sunday at 10 o'clock a.m.